Okay, so let's get started. So the second example is uh, quantum parallelism, which is uh, very important in quantum computers. Okay, so what is it? So a uh, quantum parallelism is that if we apply a unitary transformation to a superposition of inputs, the quantum computer will compute a superposition of all the corresponding output in parallel, which means that in the same time as required for one function evaluation. So this is why quantum computer is so fast. Okay. Okay, so um so what we have, we have a one X cat, right? The input register of n qubits is the input. And we have a Y cat is the output register of M qubits, and X direct product with Y is the state of a quantum computer. So what is information processing in this process? How do we uh, calculate things? So we time evolve X and Y under a Hamiltonian. Okay, so recall that we have always devised any Hamiltonian to apply any unitary transformation. So this unitary transformation is, uh, is a computation, it's a function you want to evaluate. And we can devise any Hamiltonian, which means we can devise any system. So we can uh, uh, input anything into the system, you know, Hamiltonian describes the system, right? So we can, you can do any calculation using any quantum circuit. Okay, so this is very, very important in quantum computation. Okay, so um, the evolution of a function fx such that fx maps an n-bit state uh, into an n-bit state. So this is uh, fx we want to evaluate. Okay, so define uf such that uf times x and y is equal to x times y addition modulus. So this one means addition modulus fx. Okay. So I have introduced this before. Uh, so the input register is left unchanged. So X is left unchanged. And the direct sum operation makes the transformation reversible. So remember that if we have a classical computer, so the transformation is irreversible. The classical gates, logical gates are irreversible. So imagine if you have, a, let's say you have end gate. So if you input two things, uh, true or false, x is true, y is false, what do you get? You get a false, right? You get one value. So the transformation is irreversible. So, but in quantum computation, the quantum gates are reversible. This is the main difference. So it basically does not consume any heat or work. Okay, so it's a reversible process. And this is very important. I don't have time to explain this. Okay, so the transformation uf x zero is equal to x fx. So this is a, a addition modulus, okay? You just make addition if y is initially zero. Okay, so remark here is that we write now zero, zero, zero and two cats as a, a cat in three zeros for our convenience. So just let you know. Okay, so let's consider a n equals to three state, okay? So x takes two, uh, n is equal to two to three uh, to the third power is equal to eight values. We have eight values of x. So these are the all possible values of the three qubit x. Okay, so let's recall the Hartmut gate. The Hartmut gate is given by this, this very uh, 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 strange part here. I'm sorry. Okay, so a Hartmut gate takes a zero state into a one over square root two, zero plus one and uh, a one state into a one over square root two and zero minus one. So in this Hartman gate, we can just create, we can just create all the possible eight states uh, in a three qubit X system. So we just apply three Hartman gates on each of the qubits and we can separate, we can split. Okay, we can split everything zero into zero and one, and zero and one, and zero and one, zero and one. We have eight of them. Okay, so we just, we just want to create a superposition of all the possible states using an initial state that is zero, zero, zero. So in general, if we apply n Hartmut gates on an n qubit x, we get two to the nth power terms. Okay. So now we call a single, a single uf. Okay. We just 
apply a UF on all the superposition of the states here. Maybe it uh, has 10, maybe it has, it has uh, 15, it has uh, 54 or 53, I think, uh, in the recent uh, research by uh, IBM or Google. So we apply a unitary transformation on a thing look like this. Okay, so what we get? We get a one over a square root of two to the nth power, sum over all the possible states evaluated using this uh, fx. Okay, okay. So a single call of a function evaluates exponentially large number of values of fx. This is the essence of quantum computation. So a single call of a function, you, you just do one, one calculation and you get, and you get a lot of uh, results. But the results, so, so, so the, the, the challenge is how to extract information here. So how do we measure it? So the measurement on the final state, so if you measure it, it claps to uh, x0 and x0 times f x0. So it claps into a particular state with a particular x0. So we have to measure a lot of times to get the desirable result we want, right? We, we want to know all the possible x nuns associated with this x state, right? The x state can be a very large number of qubit state. So we just do this transformation and we measure it and we get a particular state. And we can only get a particular state if we're doing only a one measurement. So we have to prepare a lot of this states, this states and with different x none randomly, and f x none, of course, randomly, and we measure it, and we measure a lot of times, many times, and we get, we get this, uh, all these possible results of x none. So we cannot control which state among two to the nth power states we finally obtain. So we need to measure a lot of times to get all the results. So everything is undetermined before the measurement, right? So this is pretty straightforward. Okay, so we have a final question. So take the simplest possible computer, n equal to i equals to one. So how many evaluations of the function f are needed to, de to decide if f0 f is equal to f1, okay? So for a classical computer, clearly we, we, we need two, two evaluations, right? We, we need to evaluate f0 and f1, and then we compare if they are uh, identical. So but for a quantum computer, consider this one, consider this, general operation on a two qubit state, okay? <clears throat> so the sigma x is just a poly matrix I have discussed before. Okay, so, so we just write this down and uh, we compute how to apply a poly matrix x on the zero and zero. So it just flips zero to one. Uh, okay, we have two zeros, so we flip to two ones. And uh, we just apply a Hartmann gate we, we, we separate all the zeros and ones into two states, right? This is pretty simple. And we apply a UF here. <clears throat> so when we apply a UF, we get this one, I'm sorry, and this one associated with the X state zero and one. Okay, for each X, different X zero, we have different result. Okay, so if we have F zero equals to F one, so this thing can change, right? We can get zero and one state in this and this, and we can get, uh, uh, we can get uh, F zero and F zero uh, addition modulus one, modulus two, uh, addition one and modulus two, uh, okay. So um, if we have uh, F zero, doesn't go to F one, okay? We have this one and this. So if we have a different, uh, F0, F1 will have a different result from the previous one. Okay, so and then we apply a Hartmann gate uh, direct product one, we, we just get a general state look like this. So in this sense, so we can, we, we, we only need to evaluate UF for one time to decide if F0 and F1. So this is a very interesting property that relates a two uh, results of a quantum computer. So this is really different from the classical computer. So in this sense, so we can see that 
the difference between the classical and quantum computer makes the classical uh, makes the quantum computer really, really fast in some way. Okay, so the only thing we need to uh, worry about, or, or or several things we need to worry about, is how to create all these qubits <coughs> that are isolated and does not collapse uh, under the involvement of the environment or some other things. Okay, we just want to uh, 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 create an isolated system so we can perform calculations on it. So in this sense, I may conclude this lecture uh, with this example. So finally, you get to know from all the uh, uh, quantum mechanics we have discussed earlier, you can know how a quantum computation works, especially in the sense of how the unitary transformation or symmetry transformation can be involved into a quantum computation so we can get the result we uh, desire. So, okay, so thank you.